What's up? Welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the stream about making a game called Songbringer. <clears throat> it's been a really busy but exciting week. I was at E3 and stuff. What's up, Pedro? How you been, man? Yeah, what's up? Um, well, I was at E3 all week, which was super great. Ah, what's up, Rocket Bunny? Yeah, I was at E3, man. It was really fun. I got to be hanging out with the Devolver Digital crew, the Indie Mega Booth crew. Um, and yeah, it was really exciting being there with all these huge games being launched. Like downtown LA, they had they had a couple, they had one side of this entire building painted with the new Final, not Final Fantasy, but shoot, I forgot what fantasy game it was. But yeah, huge. Oh my gosh, yeah, did you see the Devolver Digital spoof? That's so great. They're, um, what's up, Donna Killer? Yeah, dude, the, if anybody has not seen this, this is so good. Oh my gosh, I gotta post a link to this, like, here you go. Here's the part to where I'm in it. But just take off the seconds link or start this video over. The pre-show, did you see it? Oh my gosh, yeah, I loved, I just got through um, the part with Devolver Digital. It's so funny, dude. I love it. Oh my God. So yeah, if anybody's watching this, you're like, what the heck are they talking about? Devolver Digital did this, um, they did this like spoof pref, press conference thing. So great. I mean, the production value just going into it, it's just hilarious. And um, basically the rest of the pre-pre-show is like this, like cable access style sh 80s show. So great. It's like w basically watching Wayne's World with video games. So great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so great. I love that. So, yeah, all both our videos for the pre pre show, there's like two of them here on Twitch. These are so worth watching. How you guys been? What's up, Pedro? What's new, man? The game's going great. Yeah, it's going to be officially launched late summer. Um, we don't have an actual release date yet because we're just basically waiting to line it up with uh, Sony and Microsoft because we're doing a, a sim launch. So it'll be launched on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Steam for all platforms, Windows, Mac, and Linux. All at the same time, same day. Oh, yeah, you, you saw me on the XSplit stream? Cool, man. Dude, Rocket Bunny, you graduated eighth grade. Yeah, and uh, like otherwise, it's been really great to get the game in front of so many people, have lots of members of the press play Songbringer at E3. That's just really humbling. Like, I'm like, whoa, there's somebody from Polygon. Whoa, there's somebody from Mashable. You know, they're like, I can't believe these people are playing my video game. It was like, it's been a real honor. Um, it was hot as shit, though, in L.A., standing out there in the sun for all week, but, man, it was worth it. It was so great to be around so many other creative people. You know, it's like, like, like but here where I live, there's not many people that are, like, right next door to me or whatever. I'm not always around people that make video games, so it's cool to be around other people that make video games in person. You DJed at the school dance? Rocket Bunny, that's cool. What was the general feedback from the peop the press and the people that played it? It's really good. Actually, one of the people from the press played the entire demo. Like, I couldn't get him to stop. <laughs> it's like, he basically played through the whole... Because with the demo version, you're really only meant to play Song and Bringer for like 10 minutes. He beat both the bosses and went in, found some third dungeon, which is really... You're not even really supposed to be able to find a third dungeon in the demo. Oh, it's hot there too in the UK? Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys are 104? Oh, my God. Yeah. So where my dad's at, it's like, he's in Arizona, and it's 120 there. 
He's like, yep, yesterday it was 118. Today it's going to be 120. But where I'm at in Oakland, I think it's only like 95 or something like that right now. But man, it sounds like it's hot everywhere. Oh yeah, so E3 was pretty cool too. I mean, they had these huge banners. I mean, the entire side of the Los Angeles Convention Center was covered in um, the new Far Cry games, like Banner. The banner was so big. I know, it's global warming, right? And then inside E3 was nuts. It was so crazy. Like, this was the first time that E3 has ever had public and be like accessible to the public. It's always been a trade event. So this year they let like 15,000 people, like members of the public, be able to buy tickets. So it made it kind of from, I've never been to E3 before, so I, I wouldn't know, but people told me it was kind of different. Right? Your room feels like an oven. Same here. Oh yeah, the new God of War looks so great. And Spider-Man, yeah, right? Weren't, weren't those really both so awesome? Yeah, God of War is like, wow, this looks like such a rad game. I mean, I've seen that story game, that game before with that story and stuff like that, but the way they're doing this, this new one is rad. And Spider-Man too, god damn. Like, if, if playing Spider-Man is as exciting as that trailer was, gosh, it's gonna be a kick-ass game. That's taking AAA to like the next level. It's pretty amazing. Um, one of them I kind of laughed at was Final Fantasy's like monster bass fishing. Did anybody see that? Is there really a, a game called Final Fantasy monster bass fishing? How did, how did Final Fantasy get in the fishing game business? Seems funny to me. So, yeah, I'm just gonna fix some bugs and stuff. Actually, this is kind of not even a bug fix here, just making the thief um, work a little bit better. So let's work on this one first. Oh, the last night also, yeah. Really? Fishing, wow, I don't know how that got. Is anybody else hearing me on this? Okay, the easiest part of this is to remove her from the black orb screen. Oh, really? People started talking about it and then they spoofed it? Oh, that was a spoof. Really? You hope it was a spoof? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we need to be at the thief boss. We need world verbosity five. Mega seed. We'll do. I uh, can go back to pineal. It's fine. Thief. Flask. It's, it is real? It's a VR game, yeah. That's what I thought. I That must be kind of like the craziest niche. Yeah, so I did not get to play any games except for the ones where I was at on the... Um, so basically, I was at this thing kind of just outside of E3 called, it was the, the the Devolver Digital lot, basically. They shared their space with the Indie Mega Booth. So there was like about seven Indie Mega Booth, or seven or eight Indie Mega Booth games. So I was kind of like mostly rapping with those guys the whole time, showing, we were kind of in this little circle outside of, um, outside of E3. And then we were basically right there with Devolver Digital. And Devolver Digital, their whole crew is so so cool. Everybody, the whole Indie Mega Booth and like Devolver Digital crew, they're just all really cool people. 
It was fun as shit to be with them. Um, will I be announcing Songbringer 2 at the next E3? Hopefully. Heck yeah. I know. I got a, I got ideas. I know where the story's going. I, would, I can't wait to make Songbringer 2. And, um, yeah. New, yeah, new Ori. That looks sweet. That's a great, great game. Oh my god. They take the art to the next level in that. Art and and their sweet ass shaders too. It's just like such a beautiful game. All right. So did we run this? Yes. We need. Okay. We need to find the sphere one. All right. We're at three four zero. Yeah. Problem. One, yeah. Yeah. So basically. Um, there's some, it's like, it's kind of hard for the little guys at E3. E3 is kind of like, kind of like, yeah. It's basically, they kind of make it tough for the little guys. So, yeah, they had, they had this like parking lot booked and I don't know what happened, but basically they got, they kind of got like muscled out of their, the parking lot they booked and they had to get some other parking lot or something like that. So. We were just lucky. I felt lucky to just even be presenting my game at all. And they still made it a cool event, man. We had beer. We had free beer the whole time. Thanks to thanks to them. Um, like, free food. There was a taco truck outside, like, making up food for everybody. So, coming out of, coming out of the E3 floor madness, like, I did get to wander around the E3 floor for, like, about half an hour. So, I didn't get to play anything, but I at least got to see it. It was packed. It was, like, PAX level packed in there and from what i hear people had a long long way to get in like there was there was a two mile line long or the, the the line to get in on the first day was two miles long from what i hear will songbringer start to become 3d no i don't think it ever will be actually i shouldn't say that i kind of have an idea for a voxel engine that would look 2d but actually be 3D. Gave out Ori branded tissues, really? <laughs> I know, dude, they got they actually, they actually have some pretty cool swag, you know? I love the way I love the way companies think creatively like that. It's fun. Like you come away from it like, dude, I just got like an Ori branded tissue. <laughs> How funny is that? Oh, like Terraria? Terraria does that? Um, also, there's a there's a really cool game I just I was thinking of that does some really cool, like voxel art, but it's but it still looks like it's a 2D completely 2D game. Um, I I don't know what the one I'm thinking of, but also Rain World does that. Rain World does that really well. They use basically 3D for everything, but it looks like a 2D game. Okay, so we can go to this point three four zero, and. The thief boss is going to be there. We don't want the thief actually to be on this screen. Yeah, there she is. Okay, let's get rid of her there. I think it's foes. No, she's manually added. All right. Oh, there it is. World. Add name Thief. Okay, there's two places that's doing it. On the pattern sphere. Oh, and then it goes around and adds near the pattern sphere. Okay, so all we gotta do is remove the thief from the that screen. Man, it is hot today. It is so hot. Running this laptop in this tiny little closet. It's starting to get humid. I think I might need to turn my frame rate down. Oh, Terraria is not voxel. Okay. It's all sprite batching, eh? What's up, Ragathian? 
Oh no, they got rid of this. Oh, that's right. The thief has to be... Okay, so we need to be more sophisticated about how it places the thief. Um, I'm thinking it has to do with this has name thief. Hey, what's up, Arcane? How's it going? Okay, I think this can be simplified to be z equals zero and pattern equals k pattern sphere one. This is where we... Oh no, this clears all... Okay, this is clearing all the thieves. Never mind. This actually should have been just how it was. If it has thief... It's going good, yeah? You just finished university! I can finally say, trust me, I'm an engineer. How's it going with Songbreaker? Man, it's been going great. I got to be on um, the Twitch E3 pre-pre-show with John Carnage and Death From Above 1979. Um, and if you haven't seen the Twitch E3 pre-pre-show, it is hilarious. There's a link on my Twitter. And um, I also was at E3 last week just sharing the game with press and like we're representing Songbringer, dressing like a wizard every day. It's, it was really fun. Really, really fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, the link's on my Twitter, but I'll post another one here. I just need to keep this actually this window open so I can post links. Yeah, Death From Above 1979. They're from, dude, they're a great, they're a cool band. Yeah, you're deep studying, huh? So uh, so you, pa you passed everything, right? You're all good. Here's a link. This link points right to the part that I'm in. So I got I got to be part of this too. I'm so excited. It was really fun. You only saw tidbits. This whole this whole thing. There's like two um like two to three hour. No, four, they're both four hours. Dang, this one's four hours. <laughs> it's like it's definitely worth watching. It's hilarious. You need. Where's part one? Yeah, if you haven't seen it, you should start with part one, though. Because it's... There it is, part one. That one's really good, too. You gotta watch this, because it's got the Devolver Digital's um, 2017 press conference. Hilarious! Dude, Rocket Bunny! Congrats, man! 3.975 GPA? Alright, now we need to do a couple more things to be able to get this working. I need to look at all the places where I had... The Thief. This is where it creates, okay, the big sphere. Has name thief? Oh, this is where. Okay, this, this needs to depend on.
Somehow this needs to be a function. Yo, Teak, what's up, man? How's it going? Yeah, I need to take this out and put it as a function somewhere so I'm not duplicating this a million times. That's why I had this whole clear name thief thing. Oh, oh, I got a better idea. Instead of breaking this code and everything, I can keep it exactly as it was and all I gotta do is remove the thief right there. There we go, undo that change. Go back to this. There. Very pause. We have the thief and we beat the thief boss. Remove thief if we've already beat the hidden boss. or the pattern equals k pattern sphere one there's never just a regular thief you doing fine right on man yeah i'm really good i'm really really good I just got to hang out with a lot of other developers at E3 this week, and it really opened up my heart to be around people, to be around so many other creative people, and to have fun with them and stuff. It was a lot of work, but mind you, it was a shitload of work, actually. One of the days, I was a 14-hour day for me, showing the game the whole day in Los Angeles, right by E3, and then having to go show it again in the nighttime um, at the Mix event. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, it's always rewarding to be at these events and like be in person with all these, all these rad people that are also making games in all aspects. Like this guy's an amazing programmer. This guy's an amazing artist. This person's an amazing business person. You know, it's like, it's really cool. Yeah, I got, I, yeah, I got a lot of people able to play Songbringer at E3. People were really excited about it because Songbringer kind of really gravitate people that that want to play Songbringer are the kind of people that like the Zelda like games, you know what I mean? So it's pretty easy to I don't Songbringer doesn't need to be sold, you know, I don't have to sell it to anyone. People already are into that kind of game if they want it. So it's like the feedback is just all pretty much good. I really didn't even get anyone commenting saying, "Hey, you should change this or that this time." Um which is great, and we paid it. I paid a lot of attention, and so did um, the designer from from Double Eleven. His name's Tom. We were both paying a lot of attention to what people had to say at PAX, and so we were able to put a lot of people's feedback into fixes into Songbringer since PAX, since like March. And so this build, this demo build for E3 was actually pretty refined. And now the game's all finished, anyways. All the content's all complete, so it's just mostly bug fixes from here on out. But yeah, because of because of demoing and playing the game at PAX with so many people it really has kind of gotten refined at this point so um, it's mostly just people sharing their enthusiasm for Songbringer which is pretty neat and then also people are pretty pretty like whoa you made this entire game you programmed this you made the music and you made the art people are like whoa so that's you know it's it's kind of cool confirmation to just like, to I know I've worked a shitload of time and put a, put into Songbringer, you know, like seven days a week for the last three years, and it's cool to have all that work kind of paying off, and it feels feels nice to be rewarded with the recognition of like somebody saying, um, "Hey, this is a good game," you know, or like, "Whoa, I, I'm a I'm a I write game I write you know articles for the press." Um, for, you know big magazines and all these people are like giving me good feedback like whoa I just enjoyed that or you know it's cool it's been really neat all right let's see if this strategy worked 
Because I'm not sure if it will, if we need to have the thief boss there. Let's hope this works. The Grim Gary! What's up, man? Oh, still, the sphere is gone. Damn. Okay, so if I take away the thief, it kills the sphere. Oh, probably because in add sphere or create sphere tile, it's going to be an area creation. Has name thief is probably it. Yep, there it is. If we have the thief. Yeah, catching, right? What's up, man? How you been? Okay, well, I guess this strategy was not a very good one. Let's go with another strategy. This time, when we're creating names, still doing your thing and working? Cool, man. Oh, I got this sweet new thing. For anybody paying attention to the development and stuff of Songbringer, this is really cool. I just found this plugin for Vim um, called FZF. So I've used Control P before. I've tried Command T. I also tried Fuzzy Finder. All of those, for some reason, they had they had all these little issues. Like I'm like, oh, I don't really like the way Control P does this or Command T. But I found this other one called FZF, and FZF is sweet because not only does it integrate with Vim, and it's really awesome the way it works, but it also integrates with your shell, so you can incorporate bash commands and stuff like this. Check this out. If I wanna like open up, um, you know, I just wanna, I wanna find a file name real quick. Let's see, what do I wanna find? Oh, like the make file? There it is, it's right there. Or let's say I wanna find where CC Sprite is. Oh, it's right there. You know what I mean? You can pipe that kind of stuff in and use it into your commands and stuff like that. You can even switch the directories real fast. Let's say I want to switch to um, there, that JS bindings directory. CD, blah, blah. Bam! FCF is sweet. Don't use Vim. Use Sublime. Uh, Eves, what's up, man? Saladongs. What's up? Happy Sunday. Hope you all had fun watching E3 or whatever you guys did this last weekend. It's been amazing. Really amazing. The party's getting started. Yeah, I've been at E3 all week. Really, really amazing time. How does my make file look? Sure, you can check it out. Let's check out the make file. So my make file starts with some phony directories. These basically mean that these commands can't, these aren't commands, right? Because I have a directory named build, I, I can also have a, a make build. Um, and these are, these are assigning some variables. This is also assigning some variables depending on platform. So if this is, if it's on Linux, that's how you build and that's how you run. And this is if you're on Mac, this is how you build and run. Yeah, I did. I get. I totally saw some really cool stuff at E3. Um, oh, dude, what did I get? Oh, dude, I mostly got to hang out at the indie place. Yeah, it's a long make file. There's a lot to it. There's like some stuff that builds for all platforms. It cleans. It links. It there's commands to upload to Steam. Dude, there's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, E3 was really crazy. It was. This was the first year that they ever had access for the public. So 15,000 extra people got to go to E3 this year. 
and it just made it super slammed crazy inside. Oh, oh, the commit. Yes, this is so sweet. It's called FCF. It is so great. And it integrates with Vim really nicely. Let me get you the link. And it integrates with your shell. There's FCF, and then there's FCF.Vim. Oh, here's FD. Okay, so here's the two links you need. There's FCF. And FCF. Is this is just like that? I'm pretty sure. Yep, there it is. FCF.Vim. This is actually really cool to have both of these. And these really, really help you. Yeah, yeah. Fuzzy Finder. Yeah. And it's fast. Fuzzy, this FCF is so fast too. Like this is a really, really well written fast finder. And not only is it fast, but it's really accurate. Like if I want to find anything, like, like for example, CC Sprite, easy to find. If I want to find what are some of the harder things that used to be hard for me to find was like kit services. Boom. I can type in partial names for all this stuff now. Before I had to type in kit serve to be able to find like that, you know. Now I can use to, like if I want to find AI system, all I need to type is A-I-S-Y, and it's super easy to find. And this works for files and tags, because you can put your your, your um, file names as tags. Yeah, highly recommend it, highly recommend it. How you been, Salad? What's new? What's new with you, Beeves? Okay, so finding the thief. So, all right, we'll go to where, yeah, create names. Create names, there we go, see? All I had to type was CR Nam. Oops, but I don't want it there. You been good? More school, yeah? Oh, are you taking su like a summer course then? Or a summer? Semester? Okay, we're gonna have to make a special case for this actually. Thief. Summer courses, all right. Is it hot where you're at? Pretty much everybody has said it is hot as hot as crap right now, wherever they are. It's it's at least 95 here. It's like 104 where Pedro's at. Oh, simpler. Oh, well, what's your problem with make files? Maybe I can help you out. Make files are tricky as heck, though. Arcane is they make files confuse the hell out of me, and I've. Dude, they're they're just tricky. Like, actually, I kind of wish there was something better than make files because there's so many caveats and stuff with make files. One hundred and something, dang. So if the name is thief, and the pattern is sphere one, we're just gonna ignore this without removing the name. Oh, we need to plus plus it though. Yeah, there. So that should do it better than the other way. Yeah, you've been using Live GDX again for Swarmonian. Oh man, I hear ya. I hear ya. Go and can't use your own engine for that, huh? We got exams tomorrow. Yes, I do have some nice nice articles on ProcGen. Let me find those for you. These are written by Tom Coxon. He's the guy that makes this game called... Um... Wait, let's get, let's just get it up in there. Um, he makes a game called... Uh, Lena's Inception. It's a procedurally generated Zelda-like game as well. Kind of, kind of with a Game Boy style. Um, and his articles are called Meta Zelda. Here's the devlog though. Oh no, what happened to his devlog?
Okay, maybe there it's gotta be on here somewhere. Here we go. There's, there's, here's his devlog. You should check this out. Really great articles on ProcGen. Down here, just look for MetaZelda, ProcGen, creating overworlds and stuff like that. He's got a whole bunch of blog posts about it. And then you can also look for, here it is, procedural dungeon generation here. Scones, really? Scones. I have not heard of this. Scones, eh? Rogue Basin? Cool. Oh cool, it's cross-platform. Substitute for the classic make. Thank you, thank you, we've needed this for years. Okay, config files are Python scripts. Which I guess, yeah, would add a lot more power to making things. Good dependency analysis supports the languages I'd be using. Oh, that's cool. That's built in support for Microsoft. You kind of need that if you're going to go triple platform. Reliable detection and build changes using MD5 signatures. Oh, cool. So it's not just based on the time of your file. They actually use MD5 signatures for that stuff. So basically, if your file does indeed change, that's only when it would matter. But if your time, your file time changed, it wouldn't really matter. That's great. It's way more reliable than just timestamps. Oh, you can do parallel builds. You gotta have that. Wow. I I'm gonna take a look at this. It's not like I can I can't really change right now unless the the well the format's not going to be the same because it's Python. But for the future, that's cool. Thanks for the heads up, Salad. All right, let's see if that works. Oh, it's not name, eh? It's it. Oh, auto profile name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what did you end up doing with the go dot? Did you, are you going with that or or what? I remember you did a you did a like a small like demo or something with it right or a jam oh wait sweet we got the sphere here and the thief is not but the thief should be right here where is she it's hard to see on the screen yeah so there she is yeah i should get there we go it got stolen okay so she's not here anymore good but i can still unlock let's see if i can unlock the this whole sequence wait first hold on we need to definitely be 30. We are. All right, let's take the window down then. Let's go to 840p. My computer sounds like it's about to explode. Still going with it. Cool. Oh, you haven't had much time for game dev? Okay. Nice. That's right. You did an LD, LD Jam game. Yeah. Oh, I remember now. The the he had the rope fishing right. Ah, I remember I like that. Yeah. That was fun. Okay, so I'm going to play this sequence just to make sure the thief boss can still be activated. You did
did it. Yeah, that's right. You did it too. Oh, they, they had a new website for it or something? Music volume down. That's all right. Okay, I should probably save like this, at least walk off the screen like that. Oh, the website's just not ready for it, eh? Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll save there. Restart. Whoa, <laughs> the main features during the event. That's 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 totally in the spirit of the jam, though, right? We need kill bombs. Kill bombs. Where art thou? Super B. There we go. We need one of those and three of these. Oh no, what the heck? Oh, there. It's freaky sometimes. Okay. Kill bombs, equip. Yes, doing things last minute. That's the spirit. That's the spirit of the jam, man. Jam it on out as fast as you can, before anybody notices, before they can. Oh, oh, right. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, crap. You can't have jib during this little encounter. No jib. What the? Uh, Chrome's just disappearing on me. Right? Okay, so it looks like we can trigger the thief boss, no problem. What happens if I beat the thief boss, though? Gotta go. Alright, man. See ya, Eves. Still kind of salty about it. Dang, killing the thief boss takes a lot of cheating. There, dang. She's got a lot of hit points. This is one of the toughest bosses in the game. Okay, so just to make sure. So now that I've got that flask, she should not appear on any one of these screens near here. Okay, we're looking good. Now I should also be able to save and quit restart and it should also yes there is a hidden boss in songbringer now and she gives you one of the most important items in the game if you beat her she's totally hidden though and totally optional the sphere is gone i guess that's good that's how we want it we want the sphere to totally be oh that's why the sphere was disappearing earlier good okay so that's that's all said and done that part yeah, yeah, right. I'm excited for you to play too. You know what I'm really excited for, Teak, is people speed starting to speed run Songbringer. Um, it's it's basically ready for you to for you to make routes now. So if you're if you want to make routes, go right ahead. And the content's all complete too. That none of the content will be changing, basically from here on out. Like um, there'll be content additions though, so I'll be adding content. But what's there is there and the strengths of the enemies and everything is going to be a, almost exactly how it is right now. Yeah, hold up. Yeah, yeah, you should. Keep holding off for a little bit because there are a few different bug fixes that are getting and little tweaks like this being made that will make it just that much more better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be totally busy. Yeah. 
But I, I am honestly really excited to see people speed run Songbringer. And I really can't wait to see what times they got. My best time is an hour 45. Um, and I know people could kill that. Like I know, I know people will be able to get under an hour with Songbringer because you don't have to complete all the dungeons. I'm wondering how the heck people are going to beat like the last boss though on low health. Like <laughs> that is such a challenge. Okay, so we got this part done. Now I think I'll undo these changes and work on the next two bits. 12 hours! Nice, man. You're you're a thorough player, aren't you? You and found every secret. Did you get the 100% map or maybe the 100% items? It's actually, it's only been possible in like the last like three or four weeks that you can actually do that. So if you played before that, you you probably didn't get it because of because it was the game's fault, not yours. Yeah, yeah, not one hundred percent. Well, that's really improved a lot too. So you'll actually get your percentages will will today will be a lot better than they used to be because I was accidentally counting way too many rooms for for one hundred percent map. And 100% items was also too many. So um, now, right now, playing the game, the percentages just they they're a lot better because they're they're just accurate now. Yes, I know, right? I can't wait for that. What? Steam only tracked 10 hours. Were you logged off or something for a while? Oh, you're yeah. I thought you meant JDQ. But GDC too would be a place that people. I hope so. I hope so. I think they will. I think people. I think this will be a real. Um, very. It's very speedrunner friendly. It doesn't restrict you. Thief. Turn that back to zero. Okay. So what are the other two things to get done? If the player attacks Kusunagi, she's supposed to appear. Say some dialogue, and then run away. She does, but you shouldn't be able to hit her while she's retreating. Okay, that's fine. Just make her invincible while she's retreating. Too many acronyms! Oh, that might have been it. Yeah. Okay, so Kusanagi is make her invincible while she's retreating. That's going to be thief.text. And what mode is it that she goes into when she goes steal, leave? There we go. I think it's just leave. Mode 8, mode 9. Or maybe it's decloak, decloak, decloak. Okay, I'll pay attention to her, her AI. So turn on render verbosity um, 2. <laughs> okay, so here she comes. She's in mode seek, mode steal, mode leave. Yeah, yeah. Okay, she's in mode leave. What if, um,. What if I hit her? Mode decloak. Right, she does her thing, and then she goes seek again. Okay, as soon as she's, she shouldn't start seeking then. She should retreat and be invincible. Okay, so she needs to go straight from her mode of decloaking. Decloak, decloak B, decloak C. Once she's done with that, she should go straight to leaving. So mode eight. She should go straight into mode eight right there and in mode 8 she needs to um, become invincible oh she already has on mass collision shot friend shot neutral oh she already is invincible yes isn't it 
She could get category none. That would make it e maybe easier. But let's see if that, that works. She basically show I'll hit her and she should immediately decloak and then run away. And I shouldn't be able to hit her while she's running away. Okay. Also, she needs to stand there for a second before she does her di finishes her dialogue. Oh, and she shouldn't need to mask her collision like that. So, if she's in mode 12, she uses some more delay. So, delay here. No, no, no. She needs more delay before she finishes decloaking. So, not just delay, animate. This seems to be like delay. Maybe five whole seconds, actually. Sorry for the computer fan noise. It's quite hot in this room right now. Okay, decloak, dialogue, don't move. Good. If I try and hit her now. Good, she's invincible. Yay, it worked. Okay, that behavior has now been fixed. Good. What's the last thing? She can be attacked until what appears to be her death, upon which her outline remains on screen. Okay, that should be fixed already. But let's check it. Is it possible to keep attacking Kusunagi? The thief. Nope. There you go. Okay, all issues solved. All right, let's check out Diff. Oh, for anybody following the Vimy stuff too, um, of making Songbringer, if I've, I've basically converted to Vim about a year ago or so. Well, slowly converted over the last year, we should say. I found one other really cool technique. I open up diffs for my code in a new buffer, but also one little trick to that I just found was that I saved the buffer name as d.diff, basically just something that's consistent. It's always d.diff. So whenever I open up a diff file, it remembers where I last was. So if I'm happening to do some huge merge or something like that with a lot of diff content, um, I, it opens up the same file so I can be right back at the same location. I can quick, cl quickly close that file, recreate a whole new diff even, and it still remembers where I was. So that's pretty neat. Time-saving stuff. Totally time-saving stuff. And another thing that I forgot to mention about FCF is that it combines... Not only does it combine tags, I used to have two different keyboard shortcuts. One was for opening files, one was for opening tags, because there's just no way to combine them. But FCF can, and it does it really well. So I have to think less. Whenever I want to open a file or a function, I don't have to distinguish between that and my brain. Zilte, what's up, man? How you been, man? Okay, this is fixing all of the thief's issues. Check that in. You ate so much food. What? How did? How did this happen? Is there a story to this, Zilton? I like stories. If if there's not a story, can you make one up? <laughs> oh, one more thing with a thief. She doesn't update the HUD. Okay, we gotta fix that part too. Probably would help to have this back on still. 
and to be what one room to the right story time yay everybody gather around in a circle sit down and be good kids whoa all oh, you can eat yeah you bought a box of Papa John cinnamon twist and it's the only food I'm able to eat even when I feel full oh I'm sorry to see how this this saga unwound itself It's running, but it, oh, there it is. <laughs> I just come in here and die right away. All right, we need to be up a screen and to the right of screen. This will help. Oh, is that all right? Yeah, we can. Is there a better place for this? Maybe over here. There she is. This is a better place. There's no enemies and stuff. Rip. Okay, now, the problem is, when the thief steals from you, it doesn't update the HUD properly. First I need to find the piece of code that steals the item. Where do you do that? Is that an, an, a story thing? No, it's not a story thing. Is that part of the thief's AI? Steel, animate steel, special steel. There it is, special steel. Okay, so that's, um, we can actually just search for steel. There it is. An M steel, okay, here it is. So inside this bit of code, we need something that updates the HUD properly. You hope you win the lottery so you can back my next project? Man, thank you. I appreciate that. Voice of Grog! What's up, Voice of Grog? I hear dogs. Oh, you heard a dog outside? I think it was the neighbor's dog. That dog's probably like, it's too hot! Rarf! Rarf! It's too hot! Rarf! Test the quantity, get the item, steal the item, extract it, animate, set last compass there. Where does it update the HUD? I don't think it does. Oh, here. Hero.gear.refresh HUD for item. That doesn't work. Why not? Okay, is this the only occurrence of calling this function? Refresh HUD? I'll take a lottery winning ticket too. Really? Yeah. What was 100 there today? And you're gonna get thunderstorms? Whoa, man. Yeah, it's pretty hot here too, but we're not gonna get any cool thunderstorms or bad thunderstorms neither. We never really do. They aren't as grandi grandiose. You're gonna surprise people with millions of pound donations on Twitch streams? <laughs> yes, that's cool. Oh, you're in Lightning Alley? Whoa, yeah. I like lightning, but I, but I hear you, it can be dangerous too. Okay, there are a couple, wait a minute, no. Gear component does it. And when it increments an item. Well, why not? Okay, wait, I guess I need to test this again. Maybe this is an old bug and it was already fixed. 
Probably not. It's fun to think of that, but... She stole a kill bomb. Oh, I didn't see. It says I still have three kill bombs, but I actually have two. Yep, okay, so it did not update the HUD properly. Let's set a breakpoint. For this, we need Xcode! Xcode! Whoa, live lightning strikes? Dang, man. Really? That sounds fun to watch. You know, standard stuff, a house, a workshop, a mech battle suit, mechanical kaiju for ruling the world, and coffee. Everybody needs all these things. Yeah, link it, of course. Of course, man. You can link anything, anytime. Woo! I'm sweating. All right, what's she gonna steal? I think. I think my sound's already down, but I'm not sure if this thing has sound there. There we go. Wow. This is like right now, there's that much lightning going off? Are you kidding me? That's a lot of lightning. Whoa. A house with a good internet connection, Who, right? What could be better than that? Yeah, I hear you. Holy crap, this is live lightning strikes. All these little circles. A little bit delayed. There's like a two second delay, but still. There's even lightning in New Mexico right now. Oh, the overview shows the whole world? Are you sure you're not getting raptured? <laughs> kind of looks like that. Where is this? Over Here we go. Overview map. Whoa. Oh, the middle of the Pacific's getting lit up right now, too. Canada as well. So what is the what is the I'm guessing the red and orange dots that are just sitting there remaining are things where there used to be lightning just a second ago. Yeah, Europe only has a couple lightning strikes right now. How boring. Man, it just shows you how much like electricity there is on planet Earth. Madagascar no lightning. Scottish pizza, what? Oh, right, okay, here we go, yeah. So white is 20 minutes, red is like 120 minutes ago, okay. So yeah, these are. this is where lightning was recently. And these little circles are where it's at right now. Wow, 75% is in the continental US.
Wow. That was fun. Oh, hey, I left Song Ringer open the whole time, just eating up CPU. That's good. Oh, wait. Oh, it's because I paused it. Here we go. Okay, I got to find out why the HUD's not very refreshing. Yeah, man, I've been great. How about you? Songbringer's going amazingly well. I was just at E3 all week, having a kick-ass time with Devolver Digital, the Indie Mega Booth, um, my amazing publisher, Double Eleven, and just in in person with tons of players, lots of people from the press. Got interviewed like all week. It was a back-to-back -back events, working my ass off, but representing Songbringer real well. And Songbringer is real is at this point, Songbringer's content complete. All I gotta do is fix bugs. It's coming out late this summer for PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. No, man, don't worry about sidetracking me here. I'm just here mostly just to enjoy time with you guys and get a few things done, too. Connecticut? Long Island South? Whoa. Dang, you've been droughts? Dang. You've never seen a tornado or an earthquake. Count yourself lucky. You've been good? Cool, man. Yeah, oh, and by the way, if anybody did not see, um, um, I was on this Twitch E3 pre-pre-show, and this whole damn show is freaking funny. But here's the part where I'm in it, if you guys want to check out Wizard Foo's. Wizard Foo's five minutes of fame. But I'd highly recommend watching this entire damn show because if you haven't seen it already, it's hilarious. It's like a um, it's like a 1980s cable access show, but with video games. It's like freaking like like watching Wayne's World with video games for like eight hours straight. Whoa, man, Hurricane. Yeah, yep. Oh, I know, I know. That's what that's what that's 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 at the beginning of their E3 pre pre show. They show the whole Devolver Digital um, press conference. <laughs> their very important what was it called press conference? This is hilarious. You got to see it. If anybody hasn't, if anybody's watching this, going, what the hell are they talking about? You really should check it out if you're into comedy. And has some really really funny characters on there. John Carnage, the host, and um, and Future Man, and Jose, and a whole bunch of other hosts from Twitch, and um, and a whole bunch of their guests. They had a lot of like basically minor celebrities come on the show. All right, pizza man, thanks for stopping by. Okay, so let's get the HUD to update. Why is this bug bugging me? Huh? Okay, so the item she stole was a diamond. So it's just going to ping the HUD. Okay, so it apparently is going to ping the HUD properly, but it didn't update the diamonds. And I think we need to ping the HUD no matter what. Else if constants, I shouldn't be typing this here in Xcode. Xcode's not good for typing. Constance is diamonds. Is diamonds item? Then game scene said diamonds. This count diamonds. Any plans to get Songbringer on Switch? Yes, there are actually. Yes, so um, 
I'll just give you the short version. Basically, there's some either either there. Yeah, no. To be real, there's politics. There's politics involved in getting your name your game on Switch. And um, you know, I don't I don't really know all the details behind their decisions at Nintendo. But basically, they're making some decisions right now, which is making it hard for people like like me, like indie gamer, indie game developers, to get their games on Switch. Except they've given it away to a few different few like indies and said, "Hey, look, look, look! That indie's on it. That that we're supporting these guys." But yeah, so basically, there's some politics involved in getting your game on Switch. But eventually, yes, I think. I think they will finally get us some dev kit. If we just had dev kits, it would already be ready for Switch. But we haven't they haven't given out dev kits. So Yeah, pretty much. I don't really know. I'm not I'm not like a definitive source on this. I'm only hearing hearsay and rumors and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I've heard, you know, being at an E3 and all that. But the reality is, yes, we don't have dev kits right now. And if we had dev kits, it would probably be already ready for Switch. For 3DS, I don't know. Same kind of same thing. Yeah. They do. They've always made crazy choices like that, haven't they? I think their reasoning basically is that they want to they think that their big titles like Zelda and the new Mario and all that, those titles will get more sales if they don't allow uh, lots of other titles on there. I think that's what they're trying to do, personally. At least that's what I kind of I've heard. Oh, lightning, huh? Okay, so we could set diamonds. We also want to be able to set kill bombs. Is Constance sip air bomb? Can no oh, wait. If item equals k item super bomb, or is a super bomb container, then set super. Oh, we don't have super bomb. Oh, that's right. We need to update all of the. How do we do that? Refresh the item. Set item image. That's what we need to do. Basically, we need to do this. Why is that commented out? Yeah, right. Oh, my back, right? <laughs> Yep. Gotta stay gotta stay moving, gotta stay fluid. Okay, I'm not sure why. I think we would need to go something like this. If equip I equals item, then set the item image. And then lastly ping the HUD. Okay, let's see that. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's all right. I mean, I I think that too, <laughs> but I'm not one of the insiders or anything like that, so I can't really say definitively what's going on. The Atari box, what's that? Atari's coming back, what? I wonder why I didn't hear about this at E3.
I'm just going to pause this in case they... I don't want my video to get flagged for this, but... No, I don't want to email you. Oh, crazy, man. I got to check this out later then. So Atari... Wow, Atari's getting back in the hardware game. What? Mm. Oh, right. Yeah, the NES Mini. It would have been so cool if they made the NES Mini an actual NES. Right? Yeah. Wow, maybe I should. Okay, so we gotta... We'll see if it works. If it just updates the HUD. But it has to update the... Oh man, there's already a way that does this, I think. Okay, here she comes. What's she gonna steal? A kill bomb. And it worked! The kill bomb's at two now! And two! Yes, it worked! Awesome! But did it flash? So when you use an item... Where does that happen? Like, when you use a bomb, for example... Let's go to that. Use bomb. I do wish them all luck too. I hope it's cool. I hope it's a cool art hardware. I don't know. Did good question. Create bomb, clamp, set item image bombs, and then set bombs, which we're doing both of those. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's just set bombs, eh? Set bomb, string, set visible, ping HUD. Maybe it's set item image. Filter the item, set the sprite frame. Damn, I don't know what it does where it, it flashes. Hmm. Wow, years in the making. Infograms, grams, infograms. If I place a bomb, it does flash the, the, yeah. What did she steal? Damn it, I gotta pay attention. Start that again. Oops. Oh no, I accidentally refreshed the chat window. Sorry. Oh yeah, you saw part of the pre-pre show? It's weird, right? It's weird as heck. You gotta, if you don't like weird, you're probably not gonna like the pre-pre show. But if you like weird, man, this is the weirdest thing you're ever gonna find. That was a diamond. Damn, I didn't see how many diamonds you had before. This is hard to catch. Micro pros? Oh, micro pros. What? I haven't heard that name in forever. Cactus? Yes, oh, it did update. Okay, good. There was a cactus and she totally updated the HUD. Oh, wait. Turn off. Um, what's this? We don't need this. Saves. Render verbosity. Zero. Right? They were good. Okay, I'll slow down time and watch her steal something this time in slow-mo. She's got 505 diamonds, 9 cactuses, 4 bombs, 3 kill bombs. She stole, yep, she stole a cactus again and this time it did update the HUD. Okay, one more. Cactus again? Come on, steal something else. Damn. 
What are the chances? I guess maybe I should move around so that her random number doesn't always be that. This time I have 506 diamonds. She sold a diamond. She sold five diamonds. What's up, Pixar? Hello, welcome to the stream. She stole five diamonds that time. Steal. And it showed the wrong one. Oh, you're Magno? What's up? How's it going? Item gotten, there it is, item gotten. We want item gotten to be the original item, not the switched item. So we'll go const auto a rig item equals item. And then when we steal an item, when you do the rig item. So this time, if she steals five diamonds, it'll actually be five diamond or thing icon. I'm great, man. I'm having a good time. Thirsty. I'll tell you that. Oh, it's Pix Hero. Oh, sorry, man. I, for I didn't realize the zero. Yeah, I remember Mag Magnog. <laughs> you just proved the point. Bomb. Yes, and the bomb's updated. Sweet. Get out of here. Get out of here, thief. Okay, I think all the bugs actually for this character are now fixed. Um, she doesn't appear on the big sphere screen. She um, she is invincible when she leaves. Uh, she leaves as soon as you hit her. And when you steal items, it updates the HUD properly. You watch the pre-pre-show? Sweet, man. How did... Wait, wait, what just happened? Sorry, I just refreshed the chat or something again. Sorry, I might have missed your guys' messages. It wasn't the pre-pre-show great. Okay, I'm gonna run it one last time. Let's see if we can get some other item, like a bomb maybe or something. Four bombs. Come on, steal a bomb this time. Steal a bomb. Oh, there, that was the red diamond. That's cool. At least that worked. Okay, one more time. I just want to see her steal a bomb. But if she doesn't, I'm giving up on it. Because I know it's got the code to do that. Yeah, fuck it. Was he actually drunk? No, he wasn't actually drunk. Yeah, he was totally acting for all that stuff. But he's funny as heck, right? I love how over the top he is. Yeah, he wasn't actually drunk, and he wasn't actually tired at the beginning either. He's just... It's all a freaking for the show, man. And it's... Oh, I love that show. He surely looked drunk, right? He Maybe he actually was kind of drunk, I don't know. I could be totally wrong. But when I when I met him for my little segment, he was he was sober. He was having a good time. It's kind of who he naturally is. He's just like that. Kind of. He's a really cool guy. I got to see him again at E3. And I also got to see him at PAX. So that's when I first got to meet that guy. He's cool. Super cool. Actually, everybody from there. Twitch and Devolver and like Indie Mega Booth and everybody. All those people. Cool people. Okay, a rig item. A rig item. Set diamonds, set item image, and ping HUD. Oh, there's one other ish one other thing I should check. Refresh HUD is called from one other place. I should just make sure that this call right here 
freshens up the game scene when you increment an item. So when you buy like bombs, for example, or cactuses. Okay, so we can just go to a store and buy an item and just make sure that it updates the HUD properly. So we can go to like negative three. It reminds you of Mighty Python, yeah. So yeah, it might have been. He's naturally drunk. You, did you guys know that John Carnage actually um, studied to be a professional wrestler? Like a, not a, not a professional, what are they called? You know, like a WWF style wrestler. So he can actually take punches and all that stuff, like pretty well. Kill the bombs will do. Just need to get rid of a few of them. All right, so we're gonna buy some kill bombs and make sure it refreshes the HUD. Yes, very good. Refreshed it and bl like flashed the quantity. So we're all good. We can check this bug in. Get this bug out. All right, commit, commit. Fix. Oh, did I already cross it off? I think I just already, yeah, I already did that, okay. I already crossed it off the list. Let's check it in. Okay, well, how much time? I'll, I can do maybe like one more bug. I got two bugs fixed on today's stream. Yes. Okay, I get. I can get this one done. The hiccup when you first test if a dungeon's complete. You want to ask something? Ask away, my friend. Ask anything you want. I can't promise I'll answer truthfully. <laughs> 20 cards left? No way. No, that's only just in this duplicate pile. Some of these need to go in this duplicate pile, too. This stuff create and the later stuff can come later. But this is the stuff I need to focus on right now. Cause we gotta get bugs fixed this like crazy because we got a master candidate coming up pretty soon for um, for Xbox, I think, or, or is it PlayStation, or is it both of them? I don't know. We have a huge, basically, deadline coming up for Songbringer. And thankfully the Double Eleven team is helping me out. They're getting like so much stuff done, like all this, like all these interface things for PlayStation and Xbox and like helping me fix bugs and stuff like that. Basically just prepping the game to get launched. Launch cool. Launched without being, without sucking. <laughs> uh, hiccup when first testing of the dungeons complete. The current state of the pre-order, yeah. Ah, so if, what's currently done, right? Where is the currently development state of Sombringer at? Sombringer is, com is content complete. So that means that all of the game is there. All the, the final boss is in there, the outro, the ending, everything about Songbringer is finished. The thing that's left to do is just fix bugs and make tiny minor tweaks and, and like bug fixes mostly. So yeah, the game is coming out later this summer, which is really soon. So basically the game's finished. It's just that there's a few more bugs to fix and so yeah, if you're waiting to play the current, the final, final version, you got a little bit longer to wait. But if you're, if you don't care about bugs that much, then this version right now is maybe something you want. It's up to you. Okay, so the problem with um, this little hiccup is that it takes a minute for it to process if all of the I, the enemies in the dungeon have been killed because it has to load their profiles. Is there anything game breaking? Um, yes, there probably are still a few game breaking bugs in there, but I've fixed like all of the ones that I'm aware of that are game breaking are fixed in my to my knowledge. 
Um, however, that said, I am still finding game-breaking bugs, you know, regularly, maybe one or two a week. And like, the uh, the team from Double Eleven is also helping me find bugs. Cute, they're cute. They have a whole Q and A team, and they're finding a few game-breaking bugs here and there. But mostly no, mostly not game breaking. I'd say of the, you know, of the 50 or so bugs on my list, um, maybe three or four of them are sort of game breaking, but they're not as important as the game breaking ones from last week, for example. I always try and do the most important things first. So, so your answer to your question, yes, there is something game breaking. Okay, so when we first load the game, and it's a dungeon. We need to test if the dungeon is complete right away. So, let's go to dungeon one. And let's see if we can noticeably see this hiccup. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Cool. What's up, baby? Oh, you are? Cool. Did you open up the flaps and let some air in? What? Did you open up the flaps and let some air in or something? I'm doing it from the outside. Oh, are you doing it from the outside? Oh, did you un did you un um hook the the rod? No, I'm just gonna I pushed the rod through I Oh you did? You got it? Okay. Cool. Okay, was it possible to even tell about that hiccup? Yeah, it doesn't even seem that there is one. Paying attention to it. I guess we would need a log ticks to be able to see for sure. Okay, go to the tick. And log tick. So I'm gonna log out the ticks. This shows me how many milliseconds per tick, how many milliseconds per animate, and basically makes that all really, really clear in the log file. So I can see if there actually is a hiccup going on. Okay, I also need a little, um, uh, like a log statement right before it does this check to see if the whole dungeon is complete. And that is, I think, in uh, activate complete, activate area complete, actually. Unlock the doors, remove exit spites, grant switches, open containers, create reward, unlock all doors, complete the dungeon. There it is. Check dungeon completion, that's it. This is the function which I think is causing a hiccup. Turn on all this debug info. What's up, what's up, Tig? Oh, not much. Is Pizza Man still in the game? He's actually not in the game right now, but he's ready to be in the game. Um, I ran out of time to get that stuff implemented. I've always been planning on having some kind of scene in the game where there's a music concert type thing going on. Um, so that's going to have to wait for the update. But yes, he'll be back in the game at some point when I finally get to the able to... So, all, all I will be adding to Songbringer at this point is like extra scenes and like just basically content that's like uh, extra. It's not changing any of the existing game. K 
Can you activate it on Steam as soon as you get it, or only the final build? No. If you buy the beta right now, you can play it right now. So yeah, if you if you pay for the thirty-two dollar beta version, you'll get a a Steam key in your email from Humble Bundle right then. You get it instantly, and you're able to activate the game on Steam, and it will be activated forever from into the future. So when you buy the beta version right now, you're basically buying the game forever. So we need to include NIMS. And let's run this. Yeah. Oh. No, these are not Steamwork beta keys. They're they're permanent keys. Oh wait, maybe they are. They are to this. No, it's um. You can set them up either way. I'm pretty sure you can set them up either way. But were that the case? Were that actually the case? Like if if those Steamworks beta keys did for some reason ever expire even though I'm pretty sure it's under my control whether they do or not, um, I would actually go in and give everybody other keys to the, the first version anyway. So no matter what, if you purchase the game now, I'll take care of you. I'll get you your key no matter what, even if it's like, even if there is a hiccup. But I don't think there will be. Because I think you can set that in Steamworks to, to make it so the whether that's like which, what's it called? They have these little groups of files. I forget what the, what the Steam works word for it is, but you can mark whether certain groups of files are applicable to certain versions and stuff. Yeah, right? It should. It should appear like a normal key. Yeah. Okay, did this actually update, 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 update? Where is the check of dungeons complete? There. Okay, so checking dungeon complete took 67 milliseconds. The, yes, there definitely is a hiccup. Okay, so now we just got to make this checking dungeon complete thing only happen or happen before the game is loaded. Okay, so check dungeon complete Z. That should happen. As soon as all the areas have been created, the game has been loaded. I think there's a function called set attributes that happens whenever. Yeah, it's render system set attributes for new area pause. Let's phase open begin. Uh -huh. I think so, yeah. Oh good, I'm glad there's, yeah, there's an option to make them permanent, good. I think so. There's like, 
Yeah, there's three different checkboxes or whatever, and I think it's checked for beta. And I think you can also check it for final release or whatever, so yeah. Fade in, yeah, that would be a good important place to keep it. So basically render system set attributes. Phase credits, cycle areas, you don't need to do it there. Okay, this should actually be called from two places, phase open, so we're going to call world check dungeon completion. And this should check if it is a level, I think. Yeah, it does. It checks the levels, he returns false right away. Okay, so world check dungeon completion there, and also here, and fade in. Fade in on begin, after update. We've created the area, we've deleted all the entities, render system set attributes, world check dungeon completion. So whenever we fade in or open, it will do one quick check of how complete the dungeon is so that it can load all those profiles, cache them all in memory, and then not have to have a hiccup. What are these other two calls? See, phase credits, we do not want to do it. And phase outro, we also don't want to do it. So good, there's only those two places. Let's see how that fares. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, they share the same formats. Bundles? No, what's the name of the word Steam uses? I forget. It's like content. I don't know. Right, yeah, yeah. Developer, beta, or release keys. Packages. Oh, here we go. Okay, so did it work? We'll go here to the log. Check dungeon completion took zero milliseconds because it was already done. All right, and then it should also say checking dungeon completion here. And yes, good. It does. It takes that hundred milliseconds and moves it before the per the player ever plays the game or ever loads that dungeon so that um, it doesn't hiccup in the middle. So I need to make sure that if you get into this dungeon, or if you elevate, take the elevator into the dungeon, it should happen right when the screen is black. So the screen goes black and, and that's when it does it. So it doesn't really interrupt the play at all. So I can save there and run it one more time. And this time, when I elevate down into the dungeon while the screen's black, that's exactly when it should check the dungeon completion. And I can verify that in the log. Because on some people's computers, this can take a second. If it's taking 100 milliseconds here on my laptop, it could take up to a second on some people's systems even. Maybe not. These are just files that has to load. Depots, that's the word I was thinking of. Yeah, so the packages have depots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here we are. We're flux phase six. We're elevating down into the dungeon. It's loading banks and stuff. Check dungeon completion took 60 milliseconds. 
Check down your completion. Took zero. Yes, it's fixed. This bug is fixed. Checking out the list. See ya, bug. Later. There's there's one more layer. Hold on. Don't do Steam Workshop. It was a nightmare, really. Oh. Oh man. Why is that? Okay, we gotta turn off log tick and this stuff. So world and tick. Undo, undo, undo. Oh, it's, the document is both technically correct and hella confusing. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I understand. All right, we got this one done. And that's going to be it for this stream. I got three bugs fixed today. Wild chatting about stuff, huh? How about that? It was fun chatting with you guys. We had a lot of fun chatting about like E3 and stuff. But yeah, man, it's hot as shit. I'm going to turn off my computer and like put ice on my forehead and stuff. Yes, yes, I did. I have, I was very frustrated with Steam Controller's API. But the one thing that was really frustrating about that was actually just my wall socket. So there's something weird about this one wall socket over here that causes my Steam controller to have freaking weird ass issues. It makes it click and do all this weirdness with its haptic feedback. So it wasn't actually Steam's fault. It was just my freaking wall power outlet. I know. But and I guess and the API was kind of weird. There's a lot of there's a lot of weirdness. You have to the, the weirdest part about Steam API controller is that you gotta have Steam loaded. That's like the, the gotcha. If you don't have Steam loaded, everything messes up and it doesn't work. There's no way to get around it. You have to have Steam running to use the Steam controller. Which makes a lot of sense from their perspective. Okay, we're all checked in. Code's checked in. Yep, all right, good. Yeah. Yeah, it can be, right? It can be. The achievements APIs, it was really, really clear, though. Oh, really? Oh, that, well, that, that would kind of be neat, I guess. I think it would make their controller more universal if they did. But I understand from their perspective, they're kind of letting go of, they would let, be letting go of control and stuff. Yeah, achievements, they're super easy, yeah. Me too. I think it would be really smart of them. I think the, it's weird, like some of these corporations, if they just make choices that benefit players without worrying about whether it benefits them, I think it would, I think it leads to long-term success for companies personally, because people love it. And people, when, when people love you and love the things you're creating, it just makes, you know, why would you not want people to love the stuff you're creating that they're going to be buying it anyways? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to shut up now. Oh, yeah. The workshop. Ugh. Cool. Th thanks for letting me know. Now I know not to worry about it. So, everybody, I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. Oh, I got you some good timing. Come see ya. Check it out. What, when, what's that?